For pilots, mastering crosswind landings is not just a desirable skill, it's a necessity. This skill is fundamental to ensuring the safety of both the passengers and the aircraft. Crosswind landings are a common challenge that pilots face, and being adept at handling them can make the difference between a smooth landing and a potentially hazardous situation. Crosswinds are a common occurrence, and handling them effectively is crucial for maintaining control and ensuring a safe landing. The unpredictability of wind patterns means that pilots must always be prepared to adjust their approach and landing techniques. This requires not only technical skill, but also a deep understanding of how different wind conditions can affect the aircraft. This is especially true for pilots of low-wing aircraft, where the wing's design can make the plane more susceptible to crosswind effects. The lower position of the wings means that the aircraft can be more easily influenced by wind gusts, making precise control even more critical. Pilots must be vigilant and responsive, constantly making adjustments to keep the aircraft on course. Think of it like this. Landing an airplane is like trying to dock a boat in a current. Just as a boat captain must account for the push and pull of the water, a pilot must anticipate and counteract the forces of the wind. This analogy helps to illustrate the dynamic and ever-changing nature of crosswind landings. Just as the current pushes the boat off course, a crosswind tries to push the airplane sideways. This lateral force can be quite strong, especially during the final approach and landing phases. Pilots must use a combination of rudder and aileron inputs to counteract this force and maintain the correct flight path. This can make it challenging to align the aircraft with the runway and touch down smoothly. The pilot must constantly adjust the controls to keep the aircraft aligned with the center line of the runway. This requires a high level of concentration and skill as even small deviations can lead to a rough landing or, in extreme cases, a runway excursion. However, with the right techniques and consistent practice, pilots can overcome these challenges and execute safe, controlled landings, even in the presence of strong crosswinds. Training sessions often include simulated crosswind conditions to help pilots develop the necessary skills. These practice sessions are invaluable, allowing pilots to build confidence and proficiency in handling crosswinds. The ability to handle crosswinds confidently opens up a world of possibilities for pilots. It not only enhances their overall flying skills, but also increases their versatility and adaptability. Pilots who are skilled in crosswind landings can operate in a wider range of weather conditions, making them more capable and reliable. It allows them to operate from a wider range of airports, even those with challenging wind conditions. This is particularly important for pilots who fly to remote or less developed areas where runway options may be limited. Being able to land safely in crosswinds ensures that pilots can reach their destinations without compromising safety. This is particularly important for general aviation pilots who often fly to smaller airports that may not have the luxury of multiple runways. These airports may have only one runway, which means that pilots must be prepared to land in whatever wind conditions they encounter. Mastering crosswind landings is, therefore, an essential skill that enhances the safety and efficiency of general aviation operations. Before even stepping into the cockpit, a pilot should already be thinking about potential crosswind conditions. This is not just a cursory glance at the weather, it involves a deep dive into the meteorological data that could impact the flight. Understanding the nuances of the weather can make the difference between a smooth landing and a challenging one. This begins with a thorough pre-flight weather briefing. Pilots need to gather as much information as possible about the weather conditions along their route and at their destination. This includes looking at weather charts, satellite images and forecasts to get a comprehensive picture of what to expect. Checking the wind direction and speed, particularly at the surface level, is crucial. Surface winds can vary significantly from winds at higher altitudes and understanding this difference is key to planning a safe approach and landing. Pilots should pay close attention to wind patterns and any potential changes that could occur during their flight. Pilots can obtain this information from various sources, including aviation weather websites, apps and official weather briefings. These tools provide real-time data and forecasts that are essential for making informed decisions. 
it's important to cross-reference multiple sources to ensure the accuracy of the information and automated surface observing systems reports. These systems provide detailed and up-to-date weather observations that are critical for flight planning. Pilots should familiarize themselves with how to interpret these reports and use them to their advantage. Once the wind conditions are known, pilots can begin planning their approach. This involves selecting the most suitable runway based on wind direction and considering factors like runway length, surface conditions and potential obstacles. Pilots should also think about alternative runways in case conditions change unexpectedly. This includes selecting the most suitable runway based on wind direction and considering factors like runway length and potential obstacles. Pilots should also take into account the surrounding terrain and any other environmental factors that could affect their approach and landing. During this planning stage, it's also helpful to visualize the approach and anticipate how the crosswind might affect the airplane. Pilots can use flight simulators to practice crosswind landings and get a feel for how their aircraft will respond. This hands-on practice is invaluable for building confidence and skill. Finally, pilots should always brief themselves on the planned approach, including the expected crosswind component. This briefing should cover all aspects of the approach, from the initial descent to the final landing. Pilots should also review any emergency procedures in case they need to abort the landing and go around. This mental rehearsal helps solidify the plan in the pilot's mind and prepares them for the challenges ahead. By visualising each step of the approach and mentally walking through the procedures, pilots can reduce stress and increase their readiness for the actual flight. By taking these pre-flight preparation steps seriously, pilots set the stage for a successful and safe crosswind landing. Thorough preparation not only enhances safety but also boosts the pilot's confidence, ensuring they are ready to handle any situation that may arise during the flight. This meticulous approach to planning and preparation is what sets professional pilots apart and ensures the highest standards of aviation safety. As the aircraft approaches the runway, the effects of the crosswind become increasingly apparent. To maintain a straight track towards the runway, pilots use specific techniques, the crab method and the side slip method. The crab method involves pointing the aircraft's nose slightly into the wind, effectively crabbing sideways while maintaining a straight ground track. This technique is particularly useful in the initial stages of the approach when the aircraft is higher and has more airspace to maneuver. The side slip method, on the other hand, is typically employed closer to the runway during the final stages of the approach. This technique involves lowering the wing into the wind and applying opposite rudder to maintain runway alignment. The side slip method allows for a more precise alignment with the runway centerline just before touchdown. Section 4. Transitioning to touchdown. Finesse and precision. In the world of aviation, Few manoeuvres demand as much skill and attention to detail as landing an aircraft in crosswind conditions. This is where the true artistry of piloting comes into play. The transition from the approach phase to touchdown is critical in a crosswind landing. Pilots must be acutely aware of their surroundings and the behaviour of their aircraft as they prepare for this challenging phase of flight. As the aircraft descends through the lower levels of the atmosphere, the wind gradient can cause significant changes in wind speed and direction. These variations can be sudden and unpredictable, adding to the complexity of the landing process. This can cause the aircraft to drift or balloon unexpectedly, requiring precise control inputs to counteract these effects. Pilots must remain vigilant and ready to respond to any deviations from the intended flight path. During this phase, pilots must make smooth and coordinated adjustments to the ailerons, rudder and elevator to maintain the desired flight path and airspeed. Each control input must be measured and deliberate, ensuring the aircraft remains stable and on course. The goal is to touch down gently on the upwind wheel first, followed by the other main wheel, while keeping the aircraft aligned with the runway centerline. This technique helps to manage the crosswind forces and ensures a safe and controlled landing. This requires a delicate balance of control inputs and a keen awareness of the aircraft's behavior. Pilots must constantly adjust their approach 
making minute corrections to account for the changing wind conditions and the aircraft's response. It's a dance between pilot and airplane where finesse and anticipation are key to a successful landing. The pilot's ability to anticipate the aircraft's movements and respond with precision is what sets apart a smooth landing from a rough one. This harmonious interaction between human and machine is a testament to the skill and dedication of pilots who master the art of crosswind landings. Section 5 Post-Landing Procedures Maintaining control after touchdown. The crosswind landing doesn't end at touchdown. In many ways, it's just the beginning. Once the wheels are on the ground, pilots must remain vigilant and maintain positive control of the aircraft as it decelerates along the runway. The crosswind will continue to push the aircraft sideways, so pilots must use the rudder to keep the nose aligned with the runway centerline. This is especially important at slower speeds, where the rudder's effectiveness is reduced. Simultaneously, pilots must use aileron control, raising the wing into the wind, to prevent the wind from lifting the aircraft off the ground. This requires a coordinated effort as excessive aileron input can cause the upwind wingtip to scrape the runway. 